Hello, my name is Dr. George Machaki, and welcome to the Supervision Series. You're taking here with me either uh, online, face-to-face, -face, or uh, in a hybrid, or in one of my workshops or seminars. Uh, this lesson one, we're going to just talk about supervisor. What is a super, uh, first line supervisor? Some asterisk, uh, some, uh, if you look at this, uh, some sources for new supervisors, uh, five functions of a good uh, supervisor, types of responsibilities, accountability, modern view of management uh, skills, responsibilities of a supervisor, characteristics of a supervisor. All of these are important for either a supervisor or a small business owner becoming a supervisor, changing changing environment. Let's see, let's say uh, this general on a, uh, what a supervisor. So I'm going to have this in here. Hopefully you could see this. Let me see if I can make this just a little bit bigger for everybody. Okay. 200. So we should be okay now. Okay. First line supervisor, the first level of management in organization. You're the uh, individual where the rubber meets the road, for lack of better words. You make it happen. Uh, most come from all ranks. You could be uh, outside the company, inside the company. You work with the department. You excel in the department. You're the best one. You're best quality control. You have the leadership ability, so you're within the organization. Some lot of the first line supervisors, most first line supervisor positions are from within the organization. Where you look at middle management positions, they bring them from outside. So because remember, the first line supervisor, he or she has to be able to perform the task, to, so they could be. Uh, uh, there to train the new individuals. They do not actually do the work, but they have to understand the work and know how to train them. Efforts uh, of others complete uh, the objectives. Remember, you got the goals that come from the organization, from the top management, it comes down to middle management, it comes to the first line supervisor, and he and she are the ones that basically make it happen and measure it on team productivity. Okay, three levels of management. Real quickly, you have top, middle, and third level of first line supervisor. It depends on the, uh, the book or the author that you're reading that, but it's basically first line supervisor, middle management and top management. A small business owner, remember you are all three in one. You're a condensed package. Okay? Uh, job titles could be crew leader, training, supervisor, foreman, or four person. Let me change that because that's no longer foreman. That's not politically correct. Okay? So we'll change that right here. See, we're live. Uh, Alright, our field person. Okay? Are we good on that? What do we have here? Uh, uh, four person. All right. And, and leader or team leader. Okay? So we have those. And it could be anything else that you want to do as a first line supervisor. You're the first one. You're the one that are basically interacting with your uh, uh, hourly workers uh, more than anyone else within the organization from a managerial perspective. Then you have men and women. Remember? There's no different sources for new uh, uh, uh uh, supervisors, operative uh, employees, people who've done the task, labor unions, a lot of times I was in labor union and went into a first line supervisor position without a pain in the butt for the labor union. So if you're a good steward and everything, and, and besides, when you're bringing people into first line supervisors, they understand the labor laws and rules and regulations. So who else better to bring them into management They not only understand the mentality and the culture, why they were developed, they know how to uh, work with them and, and maybe uh, make them better or expand them or try to eliminate them if it doesn't make sense uh, for the overall uh, corporate objectives of satisfying the customer. Not to get rid of union, not union bashing, please, is to make the customer, if you can't satisfy that customer because of the, uh, uh, strict rules requirements and can't keep the costs contained, you're not going to be sustainable, you're out of the business, everyone loses, okay? So we have that uh, five functions. Now these five functions of a, uh, of a first line supervisor planning. Now if you want to become a first line supervisor, you should be a good planner. I'm looking for a person who plans his uh, job because now you're going to be planning for ten individuals, their work, organizing. How do I distribute work? How do I organize different tasks in smaller or, or larger chunks? And how do I chunk it where it makes sense so you're effective and efficient? Staffing. Who's the right person to perform the task? And sometimes do I have cross training? Uh, leading, directing, uh, challenging employee behavior, meeting departmental uh, objectives. Who well, you're the leader? How are you going to lead them? And controlling, controlling is not micromanaging. Make sure you meet, met the objective. You give your team the goals and objectives. Here's your target. Here's when I wanted to finish. Here's how much work I want done. Here's the quality I want to work. And that's how you basically uh, do control. And you know, and then customer satisfaction. Type of serve, uh, uh, supervisory skills, technical skills, very important. The first line, human relationship. Uh, you still need because you got to deal with individual, but a smaller group. Conceptual skills. You have to know how your team fits in with other teams. 
but not to the level as a middle manager, but you still need that. And decision making. You have to be able to make decisions on the spot. You can't wait for the, you're, you're doing the task, here's the process, slow down, how do I keep the process going? Not only to uh, create, uh, the, uh, to meet the service state, but to make sure you keep your employees uh, uh, meaningfully employed since you're paying for them. You want to send them home. Okay, type of responsibility. Give the managers timely and accurate information for planning. Keeping managers informed about the department's performance. Remember, as a first line supervisor, you basically are reporting to a middle manager to say, hey, we are on target, right? Remember, you're the ones who are, uh, is actually making the uh, uh, meeting the goals and everything else. You're the ones that actually is doing it. But you have to feed that information, and a lot of companies will have informa uh, um, uh, executive information systems or dashboards so they know his this work order done? How much production do we need? Do we need more people? Are we on target? Are we doing all this is from a micro from your uh, uh, reports in uh, how you t uh, charge your time and everything else in accounting is basically tells me where we're at and cooperating co workers uh, in other departments. Remember, you're the local uh, uh, person. Now, accountability, when I look at accountability, uh, as a manager, responsibilities and accountability. The practice of imposing penalties for failing to carry out responsibilities adequately. And basically, if an individual doesn't, you know, his job assignment is to do this, it's his duty, this is what you're paying for, and if he or she doesn't do it, you have to punish that individual. Otherwise, others aren't going to do it. So why have the rules and procedures? And usually includes uh, giving rewards for meeting responsibility. So remember, you have the reward, the punishment and reward, to the individuals who meet the target goals and uh, 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 objectives of your department, which basically uh, stream up to the objectives and goals of the organization. Modern management skills, here's what you're going to need. You have to have task skills, people-related activities, and change-related. Uh, right? So you have to be flexible. The first line supervisor, when the people who worked for me when I was a middle manager, a superintendent, uh, 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 at combat, basically they are the ones I would have to come, hey, I want you to change it. They've got their whole job all planned. I'm changing it because I got a, a, a directive from the vice president, hey, this customer's upset, and he's a key account customer, tell your manager I want somebody out there. So he's a little upset, but he or she has to be flexible. Just like I had to be flexible, they had to be flexible. You have to try to always meet the customer's demand and always meet your manager's request, if possible, okay? So let's see, uh, responsibilities, these are all the responsibilities of a supervisor. Recognize the talents of each subordinate. You have to know what individual could uh, do what task and which individuals work together. Uh, and have, Share your vision where the, uh, the organization wants the team to go. Treat employees with dignity and respect. Conduct necessary meetings efficiently and ensure that they accomplish their intended tasks. Keep your staff informed and up to date. You know, you get a lot of emails, a lot of information. Don't send them just carte blanche and send them out. Filter out what they don't need. Because employees are going to say, this comes from George. What does he or she say? If you start sending them all a bunch of junk or just stuff to send them stuff to keep them informed and it doesn't have any uh, relevance to their work or to them at all, they're going to quit reading anything you send them. So make sure you're using your time. And plus, the employees, they're reading, they're using time and, uh, uh, to read your memos and your requests. So make sure they're very effective. You know, Be accessible for those on your supervision. Most first-line supervisors are very accessible. Con Conduct periodic evaluation of group progress. You have to do spot audits. Don't let them know where you're at all the time. Come in and just say, hey, can I come out with you? Visit your crews at different times. Do not be consistent. Some supervisors, every at 9 o'clock, that's when they come out to visit their crews. And after that, I could have all the fun in the world. But, you know, come at 9, come at 10, come at different times to see, you know, because there are different stages of the work. And the first line supervisors, not when they start up, how do they do at the beginning and the middle of the, work, uh, the day? Are they following all the safety procedures? Are they following all the rules. Praise your staff for their accomplishments. Always make sure you praise them. Keep in touch with your industry. That means other uh, 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 things that's happening in the industry with tools or safety issues or new procedures or new procedures to get the job done and be able to perform those duties you supervise. Most first line supervisors, in the case of a strike, everything else, are able to do those uh, uh, duties. Okay, characteristic for success. Ability and willingness to delegate. Remember, you're no longer a, for, uh, uh, an individual contributor. Your job is to manage and get people to work. The hardest thing for a new su first line supervisor is delegation. You say, oh, I'll do it. It's just as quick. No, 
You have to have the individual to do it. You're in that position. They may not be able to do it at the same efficiency as you are, but they come from, like, say, 80 90%. Hey, that's good. And you could train and work with them. But if you start doing their work, why am I hiring them? You cannot do your job and the, the individual work. You are to delegate. You're the the orchestra individual. You're the, uh, the the person that's making things happen, okay? Setting an example, recognize change in the role, desire to become a supervisor. Some individuals are supervisor because, well, you've got a college degree. So you may not want to be a supervisor. You may, you eventually, if you want to move within an organization or if you're a small business manager, uh, uh, owner, you're already in the supervisor position. Sometimes you're in there. So do the best, learn, and become good uh, uh, supervisors, okay? An employer with a superior grasp of technical skills need to perform well in the department. A person with the most seniority, not necessarily is the best supervisor, just because he got seniority and he doesn't have a task. Because I've been there 50 years and they haven't fired me yet, does not make me a good leader. You have to select that. This is what the, uh, the trainer taught is uh, seniority has some respect, but it may not necessarily make you the best uh, uh, leader. Same thing with a person who is uh, a perfectionist. He or she will definitely not make a good leader because you can never satisfy it. In individual never satisfy them because their standards are so high. I, I want high standards, but you have to look, you're dealing with people, and you have people of different culture, different uh, skill levels, at different time. They're all going to achieve there, but there are different parts of their growth, and a supervisor has to be able to understand, he's just a brand new employee, he or she's not there yet, and how do I adjust that growth, okay? And uh, becoming a supervisor, set your limits on your behavior, don't be a rescuer. You're basically there to manage the team and happen to see how we can observe. Let the team come in together and come up with a solution. Communicate with everything. Be firm. These are my policies. I do not validate. No discrimination, no sexual harassment, no lying, no cheating. That thing. The other stuff, okay, you can do a little joking around like this. You could have some flexibility, but certain rules you got to have. These are rules that will not be violated while I am your supervisor or I am your uh, manager. Okay? Then you have ladies of every event. Changing environment, computer and information system, changing uh, 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 work uh, uh, environment, change the demographic. Your customers are changing, your neighborhoods are changing, your employees are changing. Diversity. When I look at diversity, do n avoid stereotyping. You could generalize. Most Polish people are hardworking, most Polish people are plumbers or electricians. I'm kidding, I'm Polish. I use the example of stereotyping. If you look at stereotyping, it means everybody is exactly has the same skills. If I look at stereotyping, Polish people like Chavana. Chavana, Chavina is a duck's bill. I hate that. So, but generally, most Polish people do uh, do like that. So you could generalize. You know, most Chinese are very mathematical uh, uh, and uh, engineers. That is a fallacy. It's a billion plus five. I have a lot of Chinese. They think I know math. I can barely add. Remember. You're looking at the perception that you're seeing. So that's stereotyping. You want to do generalizing. Most people may be, uh, they may be better because the school system, because they force those who've got the college degree. They're in there, not that anyone could get it. They have to meet a certain proficiency to go in because it's a communist country and you want to select the best uh, uh, to go in. And that's why it's such a stress level. But whatever, you can't stereotype. You generalize. Misunderstanding. A lot of times, you know, different races, different uh, uh, education. Yo, yo means okay. You know, no, in the business you say yes, sir, no, sir. Uh, right, so but you have to train them, but don't misunderstand. And a lot of times, I had in the trouble because I mis misunderstand from different culture or different generation, and that misunderstanding blew up. And it wasn't well, why were you all upset? And it was something simple. And I said, I didn't mean that. I wasn't really upset with you. All right, so you got different gender, different uh, 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 races, different religion, different race, different sex, types of disability. And a lot of disabilities you will see is not the physical ones. You can see a person is in a wheelchair or he has a. a, a a physical disability you could see. A lot of disabilities are the non-physical disabilities. He may have some emotional uh, problems. He may be dyslexic like I am, uh, uh, a little bit dyslexic. My son's dyslexic. Remember, so you don't see this, but I had to overcome them. You could give me some uh, 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 compensate, but I still had to meet the goal. You do not, you do not reduce the quality of your product. You do you adjust or give tools to the person with some disabilities to compensate them so now they're equal. So if I, it's like a handicap. I don't want to use a handicap. 
Uh, wrong words, uh, but but you know what I'm talking about. So uh, if I'm not, uh, if I have uh, trouble seeing, I have a screen that uh, is larger. Okay. If I have trouble hearing, I have a hearing aid, or I have uh, a tool that reads or transcripts. I'm blind. I can't see. I could type in, and it, it'll, it'll give me the sound in, in the words. So I don't really have to do it, but it reads that. Do you see me? So I'm giving ability. Uh, when I'm looking at uh, types of disability for d diversity, you, a lot of people think I'm disabled uh, or anything else. I don't have to have the same quality. The quality never suffers. I give the individual the tools to compensate that individual so he or she is at the same level plane as a person who may not have the disability. Okay? That'd be good. But diversity, age, color, uh, nonverbal cues, all this you have to be aware as a first-line supervisor. All right, so what do we have there? So that takes care of our lesson one. If I really look at our lesson one, let me just bring this back down here so you can see it. We covered everything else in here. And again, so my name is Dr. George Machaki, and I enjoy this is uh, uh, the first lesson of the series of 17 lessons we'll be taking in uh, uh, Principles of Supervision. Uh, and I'll see you uh, whether in the forums or online or uh, in the next video. Bye.